This is Taspoon, the series where I aim to complete the collection log one random task at a time. After nearly two years and over 4,000 hours of gameplay, I'm finally ready to take on RuneScape's endgame as I venture into the Elite tier. Welcome to Season 4 of Taspoon. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 145 of the Taspoon series. In the last video, we had some incredible clue luck. Uh, I actually ended up getting a mega rare. I won't spoil which one if you want to go and watch it. I got some dupe ranger boots. I got an extra clue item that I needed for a clue step. Uh, lots of good clue luck. We also got our first light bearer over at TOA, which is an amazing upgrade, although I haven't found a place to use it yet. Uh, we did some Vardorvis, where I ended up getting a Chromium Ingot, and we ended by rolling another Desert Treasure 2 boss task, where I'm going to be going back to Vardorvis. I'm trying to kill only Vardorvis for these tasks to try and target the Altar Vestige. I think that is the biggest upgrade, but as long as we don't get the Executioner's Axe Head on this task, we should end up with a big upgrade, whether a Virtus piece or a Vestige. So, yeah, that's all I got to say. Let's jump right into it. I got pretty lucky in the last episode. I had some time to kill and I wanted to find something to AFK. So I went over to the Virewatch Sentinels and I actually managed to get a Blood Shard in like 150 kills. So I've been using the Blood Fury at Vardorvis and it's made a huge difference. That along with the Sarah Godsword has helped my trips last longer, which in turns has helped give me more kills per hour. So hopefully this task goes pretty well. Just near the end of that last task, I was really starting to understand the boss better and my trips were feeling better. I was getting way more perfect kills. So hopefully we can continue that. I'm actually so excited to get started with this task. I just realized that there's a world where I get two Chromium ingots and then an altar vestige, and we end the task with essentially an altar ring in hand, which would be incredible. Now, it's not very likely, but it is possible. Hey, an elite clue. an awakener's orb <laughs> well that was a pretty good first trip an elite clue and an awakener's orb now i don't anticipate using the awakener's orb anytime soon but still cool to get oh apparently i got a 110 pv i didn't even notice oh and that was 200 kc for a solid 120 pure essence that's just that's lovely i think i've realized my problem with vardorvis i actually don't mind the mechanics that much they can be kind of fun when you get good at them, but the reward is so bad. I mean, this is a level 784 boss, and I got 120 pure essence. Like, why? Why is that even on the drop table? You know, I never really paid attention to the regular drop table at Vardorvis, mostly because it doesn't matter to me. I'm going to be killing the boss regardless for the uniques, but, like, why? There's so many drops on here that just are so out of line for a level 7, 800 boss. Like, why does it have a 1 in 100 drop chance for fire runes, mind runes, bronze, mithril, adamant, javelins, pure essence? Like, wh why are those even on the drop table? Like, don't get me wrong. I understand you can't have just an entire drop table filled with valuable, useful items. But, like, really? Bronze, javelins, mind runes? Who is killing a level 780 boss and thinking, oh yeah, I needed some extra bronze jab? Like, no one is ever going to use a bronze javelin in their life. Like, why Why is that item even in the game, let alone on a drop table of an endgame boss? Fill it up with items that are, like, sort of useful, but, like, not super valuable. Like, some herblore secondaries that might be okay, or, I don't know, just literally anything that isn't a bronze javelin. Now, one thing I do like about the Vardorvis drop table is the clues. Uh, you have an equal chance to get an easy, medium, hard, and elite clue all at a 1 in 160 rate, which means that essentially every 40 kills, you're at least getting a clue, and all clues are useful for me. I would prefer more elites and hards, but uh, all things considered, I do like that I can do a bunch of kills, get a couple clues, go and do them, and uh, start stacking up caskets again. Hey, Ellie Clue, nice. I was curious what my actual chances of seeing a new unique was, so I went and did the math, 
And if you include all of the new uniques that I have, I should see one in every one in 362 kills. Uh, the same chance of seeing a chromium ingot, I should see at least one of these things. So my new dream for this goal is to get one chromium ingot and then any of these, preferably the vestige. Now, again, the drop rate is a little weird with the vestige, but I'm just going off the wiki's uh, one in 1,088 rate. Hey, a blood quartz. So extra blood quartz drops are kind of interesting. Uh, you can take them to the ancient vault and use them to open a chest where you have a one in five chance to get five different loot drops. Uh, for the blood quartz, it is a dragon plate legs, 100 dart tips, 500 blood runes, 100 noted tuna potatoes, and 20 noted rune ore. Uh, so that's essentially just like a pretty good drop. But for now, I'm just going to keep them. I might do them like all at the end or something, or I might just keep them to make multiple scepters. I don't really know yet, uh, but I'm not too pressed to get that loot. So I'm just going to keep it for now. Man, sometimes this boss is so frustrating, and other times you do some sick gamer maneuvers, and it actually just feels incredible. Oh! And then there's a great example of just how annoying it can be, because that was... Man, I need to go back and watch that one. Man, that is crazy what just happened. This is why I love recording my gameplay. You get to see some funny stuff. Uh, the axe was coming to where I was standing, so I had to move to the left. As I was doing that, he started doing his little dash attack where he spawns the things under you, so you need to move. And I knew one was going to spawn. I know you can't see it because it's behind the pillar, but I knew one was going to spawn on the tile I was standing on. So I tried to move two tiles to the left so I could still hit him. And as I did that, he jumped again, and his little head tentacle thing was, like, sticking out of his hitbox just barely on the tile that I was trying to click on. And I accidentally clicked on him, which, because I could attack him on the tile I was standing on, I didn't move, and then I got hit by the thing that spawned underneath me. That is... That's crazy, man. <laughs> And as soon as I complain about the drop table, I get back-to-back -back dragon dart tips. That's probably the best drop on the table, other than the uniques, obviously, but uh, yeah, we'll take it. Oh, and just past the 300 KC mark, which means that theoretically, statistically, we should see a unique soon. Hopefully, maybe, please, game. Hey, an only clue with a bronze javelin drop my favorite okay hello good morning uh, i'm sorry if my voice sounds like i'm dying my allergies are terrible this time of year but you know who's about to be dying is vardorvis am i right fellow gamers i don't know what i'm saying let's go do this I am at 313 KC today, and my objective is to get to, like, at least 450, uh, is, assuming we don't get a unique before then, which means that I've got a lot of Ardorvis to kill today, so let's go get started. Orb! Hey, a Blood Quartz, nice. Oh, another blood quartz. What? What? I didn't mention it before because I already had a blood quartz, but they are a one in 200 drop. Now, the first one gets more and more likely the more kills you do without one, but the rest of them are always one in 200. So I've got three one in 200 drops in the last like 300 kills. But, uh, you know, it'd be cool if I could get that luck somewhere else. You know, maybe maybe one of these items game, please. So I talk about this a little bit in an upcoming clip, but I decided to do the Axe Enthusiast Combat Achievement, where you have to bring him down to the Enrage phase, where his Axe speed is at its highest, and survive for three minutes while never leaving the center 25 tiles. As you can see, I've got them marked out here on the tile markers, this 5x5 square. You have to stay in that 5x5 square for three minutes, then kill the boss, and it ended up being a lot harder than I anticipated. 
Uh, I think the clip I'm going to show you here is the one where I accidentally killed the boss. I got him all set up. I was doing great. And I didn't realize how much damage I was doing because I was focusing on just surviving. And I, I accidentally killed him. And I was very upset because this was a great run. I had lots of supplies. I wasn't getting hit very much. And the annoying part is that you kind of have to like keep hitting him to keep him at low health because you want to be able to finish him off as soon as possible. And he slowly heals the more damage he's doing to you. So you do sort of have to keep hitting him, but clearly here I just hit him a little bit too much. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about that, but you'll hear more in the next clip. Yes! Finally! Let's go! Okay, I know that may have seemed a little bit random, but I got sick of seeing the message that says, like, you failed this combat achievement every time I killed Vardorvis because I was doing it, like, the normal way. <laughs> I don't know why, I just hated seeing the message. So I decided I could either turn off the combat achievement failure messages, or I could just go ahead and go and do it. And I didn't realize that that was going to be so darn difficult, but... Uh, yeah, that probably took me like two and a half hours. I used like 200 brews failing that combat achievement over and over again, and I don't really want to talk about it, but uh, we're done. C Grandmaster combat achievement. Thank goodness I never have to do that again. I think my main problem was I was trying to just brute force it, and I learned a couple things while doing that, uh, which sometimes doing those combat achievements can actually be really nice to help you learn the boss better. It really helps you make sure that you really know the mechanics, and I learned a lot about axe skipping as well as how important praying against that little range guy is, because I think that was the cause of most of my deaths, wasn't necessarily getting hit by axes. Honestly, I probably could have just stood in one of the spots where only one axe can hit you and never moved and just tanked every axe hit as long as I prayed correctly and dodged the stuff on the ground. Probably would have been better than what I was trying to do, but in the end, I did learn a lot about how the axes work and how you can skip them, whether you're, you know, not just in like, I know how to skip them in this area just because I've gotten so used to being here, but now I could probably figure out how to skip them like wherever, just because I understand the the way they work, if that makes sense. But yeah, I'm, I, I, I'm not going to have to because I'm going to stay here for the rest of my life in my safety corner. But yeah, I'm really not sure what you guys are going to see from that whole ordeal because pretty much every death I just deleted the clip immediately because I was angry. So maybe I'll have to go back and restore some of those deleted clips just so you guys can see the pain that I went through. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so happy to be done with that. While I was looking up strategies for how to do that combat achievement, I noticed that on the wiki it actually shows you what percentage of the players have each combat achievement and less people have that Axe Enthusiast combat achievement than have the achievement for killing Awaken Vardorvis, as well as it's the same uh, percentage as the Grandmaster Speed Time, which means that somehow I can do that, but I, there's no way I, I can even do the Master Speed Time, let alone the Grandmaster, and I'm definitely not killing Awaken Vardorvis, so uh, yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself for doing that one. And this is going to be kill number 362, which normally wouldn't really mean much, but that means that we are officially sort of dry in a way, kind of. Like I said before, the drop rate is a little bit wonky, but I believe, according to my math, that means we should have seen one of the items that we're after by now, uh, or at least by the next kill, I guess. So, yeah, I mean, not that it doesn't change anything, we're going to keep going either way. Orb! Orb. After seeing the thing about the combat achievement with Awaken Vardorvis and getting all these Awakener's orbs, a small part of me wanted to try it, but I looked into a video and there is no chance that I can kill it, especially not with this gear. I just, it, it would just be a waste of time. Although it is sort of on the list of like extremely, extremely end game goals. I would love to kill all the Awaken bosses. Uh, for now, that is not going to happen. Oh, my recorder wasn't on, but I got another Blood Quartz. So apparently my luck is good for at least one of the items. Oh, and apparently we passed 400 KC. I didn't even notice, but cool. Hey, Elite Clue, nice. My strategy for the clues right now is I only do them when I get a hard or an Elite Clue, and then I'll do any easy or mediums that I got along the way. Uh, just because easy and mediums are, well, they're so easy to get that I don't really care about doing them right away, but hards and elites are definitely worth doing, so 
Uh, like right now, I think I have an easy, medium, and now an elite, so I'll go and do all of them after this trip. Hey, let's go! Well, it might not look like the best drop. I mean, it's only 97k, and it's not a new collection log, but essentially, that is two now of the four pieces that we need to make an altar ring, so we will take it. That is great. Uh, again, those are one in 362, so the fact we have two of them already is amazing. Uh, but yeah, we're still gonna keep going, I'm just more motivated now. As much as I may be getting a little bit sick of this boss, I will gladly stay here for a thousand more kills if it means ending the task with an altar ring. It's just such a big upgrade, I wouldn't even care. I swear that thing spawned like over here or something. I've never seen that before. <gasps> no way! Uh, let's go! What the heck? The actual dream, it's happening. Three chromium ingots. If we get a vestige right now, I am popping off. Oh my god, I'm so fast! 102, let's go! It's crazy that I go 479 kills and the fastest I can kill it is a 110. And then one kill, my salad blade just goes in. Literally, I, the whole time I was thinking like, wow, this just is not missing. And sure enough, 102 just from good RNG. I didn't even have a damaging spec weapon. I didn't even use my SGS. Like, that is crazy. Okay, hello, good morning gamers. Uh, today is my editing day, so I'm gonna go find something to do while I do that. Uh, we are at 484 KC, and I'll continue once I'm done, but for now, I gotta go find something to do. Uh, I think I'm gonna actually go and fish some angler fish. I've been using quite a bit here of our Dorvis. Uh, I bring three, and I use one at the beginning of the first three kills of the trip, just to make sure that I don't have to eat during the kill. So I've been going through a bunch of those, gonna go and fish some more. Okay, video has been edited. I fished 850 angler fish. Uh, I think I'll cook those later. For now, I gotta go get a thumbnail and then we're going back to the tentacle guy. Okay, I take it back. Uh, making the thumbnail actually took longer than I thought, but uh, I cooked all those angler fish, 1700 of those, it feels good. And now we're going back to Vardorvis, finally. Don't forget to check and make sure that you're subscribed. I'm trying to reach 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year and I need your help. It is crazy how much a few hundred kills can make a difference at a boss. When I first started farming Vardorvis, I thought there was no way I was going to be able to get that uh, five perfect kill achievement. And all of a sudden, it's like, I just did it. On my first trip of the day back, just sort of passively did it. Because, uh, you know, once you have a few hundred kills at a boss, you get to know the mechanics, you get comfortable with everything. And all of a sudden, it's just like, oh, this boss is easy. <laughs> Like, when I first started farming Vardorvis on the last task, like, when I really got into it, I was dying a lot, and I was getting very frustrated, wasn't having fun at the boss. Now it's gone to the point where, like, it's almost mindless. Like, I see the axes spawn, I know exactly where I need to stand, I know how to deal with all the mechanics, the little head that pops up isn't, like, surprising me anymore, I'm kind of anticipating it. Like, I don't know what it is, but all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, this boss, not very hard. And this is gonna be kill number 500 on the dot. Uh, that is kind of sad. I was really expecting to be done by now, but oh well. I guess I did dump all my luck into the chromium ingots, so that'll pay off later. But for now, I guess I'm just going to keep going. Uh, I'm getting a little sick of this boss, even though I just said that it's getting to the point where it's easy. That's also sort of the same point where it gets to be a little boring because I'm not paying as much attention. But uh, oh well, we continue. Hey, an only clue. Hey, another blood quartz. Wow. I was actually thinking about the blood quartzes, and I don't think I ever need any more blood ancient scepters. 
Uh, I should never lose the one that I have unless I take it into the wilderness, but I don't see why I would ever do that. So I think I'm just going to save up all the quartzes and go and open a bunch of those chests at the end of the task uh, just for some free loot, because why not? That was fast. 59 seconds. Wow, that was fast. <laughs> Honestly, I wasn't really paying attention. I just noticed that I hadn't had to resummon a Thrall yet, and I was pretty sure I summoned it, like, right at the beginning of the kill, which means that it was going to be under a minute, and sure enough, 59 seconds. That is crazy fast, considering I'm not using a DPS spec weapon. So I just went and rewatched that kill, and I hit a 38 at the same time my Thrall hit a 3 to leave Vardorvis with 12 health. If I had just hit a 50, which I can do with this setup with the blade, that would have been the GM time. Just straight up, just from good RNG. That's crazy. I guess it's hard for me to know for sure. I could have been one tick too slow in that case, but I had to hit Vardorvis two more times after that. And with a four tick weapon, that's eight ticks, which is 4.8 seconds. So 59 minus 4.8 minus five is 54. You know, yeah, the math, you know the math, math. <laughs> No! Oh, that's so sad. Oh well. It really is too bad. I mean, I'm trying to rationalize it as a good thing in my head, but I just... Uh, it's gonna be minus one bank space for a very, very long time if I ever complete the axe. It really is the worst case scenario. Everything else would have been way better, but... Uh, yeah, okay, whatever. The only good thing about this, and I mean the only good thing about this, is next time we get a Desert Treasure 2 boss task, we are guaranteed either a piece of Virtus or an Altar Vestige, as long as we go back to Vardorvis. But, you know, it would have been better to not have to do that. <laughs> well, I guess I take it back. The other good thing is that we did complete the task. It is a collection log slot. It's not the end of the world. I should still end up with an Altar Vestige, hopefully by the end of the Elite tier. And we're done killing Vardorvis. I've been killing Vardorvis for like a week straight now and I am sick of this boss. So I guess there is some upside. Uh, let's go open these chests. So I mentioned this earlier, but there is a chest in the corner here in the ancient vault that you can use quartzes on to unlock and you get an extra loot roll uh, dependent on which boss you kill. And the Vardorvis table is actually, I think, the best one. I think all of the items are very good. Uh, so I'm just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna click it. Dragon Plate Legs, you'll love to see it. Uh, Dragon Dart Tips, okay, sure. Uh, Runite Ore, great. Uh, more Dragon Plate Legs, sure. And more Runite Ore. Uh, cool, nice, uh, wonderful. Honestly, of all the items I could have gotten, I was kind of hoping for like tuna potatoes and more Dart Tips, but uh, sure, uh, why not? Great, uh, awesome. I'll put the loot up on screen here, but... Uh, man, it is pretty bad. <laughs> All things considered, I mean, the orbs are, I guess, maybe useful in the long run, but uh, pretty useless to me. The smithing supplies are nice. Adamant, runite, ore, coal, all that is pretty good. Uh, javelin heads, sure. I mean, I'm doing them right now, but, like, I can get fletching XP elsewhere. Bunch of supplies, gems, runes, I mean... All things considered, not a lot of useful stuff there for me, so uh, that's not great, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh well, enough wallowing in my own self-pity. We can go and roll a new task. And who knows, maybe we'll roll another one. Alright, here we go on the spreadsheet. Complete the task. And let's see another one, spreadsheet. Get one new unique from Master Clues. Okay, well, it's not a Desert Treasure 2 unique, but I think this is fine. Okay, so I think I have some Master Caskets in the bank already. Eight is not as many as I was hoping for, but it's better than zero. So, uh, yeah, eight Master Caskets, I don't know if that's going to be enough, and farming for Master Clues might be kind of annoying, but, uh, yeah, huh. Oh well, there's nothing I can do about it for now. Let's just start opening, and who knows, maybe I'm worrying about this for nothing, and we're already done. A Mimic, okay.
Fun fact, the chance of rolling third aid from a mimic from a master clue is one in 228. It would have been so cool. Uh, by the way, that is a dupe black demon mask. Very sad. And our bonus loot was 500 blood runes, which isn't too bad, honestly. I just realized that I am at 7 out of 49 uniques, I guess 48 if you take out the Bloodhound, and I rolled a dupe. That's that's very sad, but uh, oh well, 7 more caskets, hopefully that doesn't happen again. Okay, Jungle Demon Mask, not a Black Demon Mask, good, okay, good, 4 caskets left too. I can't believe I was worrying for nothing, that was easy. All right, back on the spreadsheet. Let's try that again. Complete the task and let's see what we're going to go do. Get one unique drop from God Wars Dungeon. Okay, interesting. So this is actually pretty interesting because I have a few options. Uh, for starters, I cannot go back to General Grardor because I already have all of his items. So won't be doing that. Uh, Zilliana, the only thing I'm missing is the Ceridoman's Light, and although Zilliana might be one of the easier ones to kill, uh, this item is not worth getting, so I will not be going back to Zilliana. So my options are uh, Krill or Kree or Nex, and I haven't really decided what I want to do. I think I'm going to save Nex for later. I do have to get at least one or maybe two Nex uniques, I don't remember. Uh, on the elite tier, assuming that I get the Ceridoman's Light and I get the Staff of the Dead, I get the Zami Hilt, and I get all three armor pieces as well as the Hilt. There's a lot of God Wars Dungeon tasks on the elite tier. I'll need to go and count, but I believe I need to get at least one, maybe two next items in the future. But for now, I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, I think once I get a bit better gear, I might try and do some like small teams to actually have like a non-zero chance to get an item. But for now, we're either going to Krill or Kree, and I think I'm actually going to go to Krill mostly because I want to get another Zami Spear. I don't really care about the Zami Hilt or the Staff of the Dead, to be honest, but I, I really want another Zami Spear. So I think I'm going to go to Krill until I get one of those, and uh, I, I might finish the task, I might not, I don't know. I think Kree is arguably more useful. I think Arma is, well, I mean, it's just better range armor than what I have, and I could break down and fortify my Masori if I got, like, an Arma Chain Skirt that I didn't want. So Kree is definitely an option. I just don't like the boss very much. So I'm going to start with Krill and try and get another Zami Spear. So I did just go and count and there are nine God Wars dungeon unique tasks left on the elite tier. And if you count up all the items we're missing from the main four bosses, one from Zilliana, four from Kree, which is five, two more from Krill equals seven. I can count. Uh, that means we need to get two next uniques in the elite tier. Uh, again, not really concerned about it for right now, but I was just sort of curious. Two next uniques. Interesting. Anyways, we're going to do some Krill. Uh, I just pulled up the last time I went to Krill, and this is the gear that I was using. And this is so adorable. I love saving my inventory setups for this exact reason, but... Uh, yeah, we will not be doing this, but what this did remind me is that I should go and get a Greater Demon Slayer task so I can use a Slayer Helmet. So I'm going to try and do that first. I feel like I mention this every time I have a task that requires me to get a Slayer task, but uh, I currently do not have a Slayer streak, which means that I can do tutorial skipping without any negatives, uh, which is exactly what I'm going to do for my Greater Demon task. And currently I have a Hydra's task, which sort of feels bad to skip. Usually you'd want to do these, but... Uh, I'm essentially done with Hydra, so although it feels kind of weird, yes, I would like to skip that, and hopefully we can get a Greater Demon task pretty quickly. Now, I know I said that I wanted to go to Krill to get a Zami Spear, and although that's true, in reality, I actually want two Zami Spears. Uh, one to turn into a Hasta, which would be my current best-in-slot stab weapon, and one to keep as a spear for when I roll a Corp task. There is exactly two Corporeal Beast tasks on the Elite tier, one to get the Holy Water and one to get the Shield itself. So having a Zami Spear would be super nice if I don't have a Fang yet, and if I don't have a Fang, then I will want a Hasta as well. So hopefully I actually end up getting two Zami Spears. Gonna be going to Duradel to try and get the Greater Demon's task. Obviously I can't go to Konar because it won't be in the God Wars dungeon, and Duradel has the highest task weighting of the other Slayer Masters. So yeah, damn, that would have been cool. Every time I get a rat's task, I want to go and kill Scurrius so badly. I don't know why, I have nothing to gain from there other than 
18 relatively quicker kills and chances at a pet, I guess. I just think it'd be funny. Okay, hello and good morning. Uh, yesterday I did a little bit of tutorial skipping trying to get a task probably for about an hour or two and I decided I was going to go to bed and right as I decided I was going to go to bed Duradel gave me a vampire's task so I figured I might as well just AFK while I watch some stuff try and get a blood shard to no avail but we are going back to tutorial skipping the good news is I can just skip this task whenever I want so I figured I could just come here for a little bit try and get a blood shard didn't really manage to so uh yeah let's go back to it and there we go 235 greater demons Took about an hour of tutorial skipping this morning, so not too bad. So this is going to be the new setup. Uh, I actually have crystal armor this time. I've got a saturated heart. I've got better mage gear. Just pretty much upgrades just all over the place. I'm going to be on Slayer task. So killing a boss on Slayer task with a Bofa crystal armor. I mean, it's going to be pretty easy, which is going to be nice. Uh, I've got 235 kills to go, which means that I'm going to get 118 boss kills because one of the minions is also considered a greater demon. So you essentially go through two kills per boss kill, uh, which is totally fine. I mean, I can just get another task if I'm not done. And yeah, I'm going to send it. So now the only problem is I need to remember what the heck I'm doing here. Should be essentially the same as Bando's. There's a bit of a difference at the start. I think you have to wait one extra tick to attack him. But other than that, I think it's more or less the same. And to start, you just have to go to these four and do a different thing. But uh, I'll figure it out. I realized that I had a couple combat achievements that were super easy if I just did this in a privately rented instance. So this is the second trip, decided to do that. Uh, I believe that one was for not letting him melee me at all. And there should be one for getting 20 kills in a single trip as well that I can do. So uh, yeah, free combat achievements. Well, looks like I'm going to have to rent another private instance for the next trip because, uh, well, I don't want to talk about it. But before I go back to Krill, uh, real quick, this is Winter Todd. She's been in the clan for a really long time, and she helps me moderate stuff, and she helps me with the videos and whatnot, and she is finally going to max after many, many months of grinding, and I just wanted to put this in the video. So if you want to leave a comment and maybe say grats or whatever on behalf of me, then uh, I'm sure she would really appreciate it. So there it is, grats, Winter. Yay! Anyways, back at Krill, I need to remember to do a private instance for that combat achievement that I didn't get. And I did just want to mention, I said I wanted two Zami Spears by the end of this task. And that sounds a little greedy, but in all honesty, it's kind of somewhat likely to happen. Uh, the two items I have left, the Staff of the Dead and the Zami Hilt, are both a 1 in 508 drop chance. Meaning that it's a 1 in 254 on any given kill to finish the task. And a Zami Spear is a 1 in 127, so times that by 2, 254, get two of them, get one of the two items, finish the task, two Zami Spears, turn one into a Hasta, I'm rambling, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go start. And there is the 20kc achievement. Honestly, kind of embarrassed that I fumbled that in the first place, but oh well. Oh yeah, I also ought to mention that if I can get another shard one, I can make a second godsword blade, which is just sort of a convenience thing for me. It's really annoying to have to swap back and forth between the bandos and the Sarah godsword. Uh, and I can't really think of a place that I would want to bring both of them at the same time, luckily. But if that ever comes where I want two godswords, it would be nice to have a second blade. Um, okay, uh, cool, wait a minute, what? Okay, so that's pretty good, uh, kind of annoying, I really wanted another spear or two first, but I guess I can't complain, Zami Hill, 260kc, sweet, nice! Again, I still only have the one Godsword Blade, so that's kind of annoying, but uh, we now have access to a ZGS, so yeah, let's talk about that. So the ZGS is pretty bad, all things considered. 
Uh, the spec is a freezing spec, freezes the player in place for the same duration as an ice barrage, which can be useful. Uh, the only place I can really think of is at Muta Dials, at uh, Chambers of Zarek, but uh, I'm sure there might be other places. Maybe you can, I could take it into the wilderness if I wanted to use it as a getaway weapon, uh, just freeze and step under to log out. Uh, but other than that, it is not the best weapon. What it is really useful for is the master clue step. This is actually the main reasons I wanted to get the ZGS. Uh, this master clue step is probably the one that I've had to drop the most throughout this account. I don't know why, I just kept getting it. So now I can finally do that, thus unlocking another master clue step, which is very useful for me uh, because I hate having to drop master clues. So good, again, would have rathered some spears first, but we'll take it. This is usually where I would put the rest of the loot on screen and talk about it and whatnot, but Man, there is nothing to talk about here. Krill is not very good for loot. If you're not getting uniques, you're not getting much at all. The only thing I will say, the minions do drop wines of Zamrak. I got about 150 wines. That's at least sort of useful. Anyways, that ended up being a lot faster than I expected, so I think we should have time for another task here. Let's go roll a new one. Okay, here we go. Complete task done. Let's see another Desert Treasure 2 task, please. Spreadsheet. Get one unique from Revenants. Interesting. As far as Revenants go, I have nothing. Okay, well, I have the bracelet and the ether and the teleport. But other than that, I haven't really got any real items from Revenants. As you can see, I've only killed 50 of them. And to be honest, I've never really killed Revenants elsewhere either. Uh, so this is going to be mostly a new experience for me. I don't know what's going to be the best for me to kill. I've heard there are a lot of bots there right now, so... Uh, we'll have to see if we can find a world, but, uh, yeah, interesting. Revenants, okay. So, I think my plan is going to be to go in there with just complete budget gear. Uh, this just, this screams a player that is not worth your time killing. And not to mention, I do not care about dying and losing any of this stuff. Uh, other than the bracelet of Ethereum, because it's my only bracelet. But you always lose a bracelet if you die to another player. As you can see, even though it's my most valuable item, it doesn't go to protected when I turn protect item prayer on. So, yeah, I'll, I'll lose this, and I, I don't care about this at all. So, yeah, I think that's my plan for now until I build up some uh, more supplies, like more bracelets, more ether, etc. So, yeah. Okay, uh, here I am in the Rev Caves. I don't really know, like, what good revenants are to kill, so I found two of them, and I'm going to kill them. What just happened, man? What was that? Hey, another bracelet. Well, that was a strange first experience at Revs. Uh, some guy just sort of like ragging me, one iteming with a fang. I don't know what that was about. I got two bracelets, which was good. I, I don't know. That was just, that was weird. I'm going to actually go and look up what Revs are good to kill. So after looking into it a little bit more, people have generally concluded the best way to do it is to find revenants that with your current gear and setup and everything you can kill. And as the other one is dying, the other one is spawning. So essentially you're always attacking, but you're also getting the optimal kills per hour. I don't really know which revenants that's going to be. Uh, I'm starting here with the pyre fiends just because I don't know. I was on this world and they were empty, but uh, I'm just going to test out a few different things and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so after a little bit of testing there, killed some pyre fiends, I was killing them too quickly, went up to the cyclopses, I was killing them too slowly, which means that I need to find something in between those two, and the only one in between those two is hobgoblins. So I'm gonna try that. 
So I did about 100 Rev Hobgoblin kills, and I'm feeling more comfortable in the Rev Caves now. So I think I'm going to go to more of a true three item setup. Uh, simply because I get to protect three items guaranteed. Why would I choose such cheap ones? So I'm going to pick probably a better weapon and a better amulet. And hopefully we can kill something higher and get higher chances at these items. A couple of reasons why I wasn't just using this stuff from the beginning. Uh, for starters, I wanted to look like I wasn't worth killing. Uh, any PKer that sees someone with a magic short bow, it's sort of like, you know, whatever. Whereas if I'm using the Bofa and an Anguish, you know, they might think that there's the off chance that I have a plus one that they could smite or something. But uh, also, I haven't seen any real PKers. I mean, other than that one guy with the Fang, haven't actually been attacked yet. So I'm just going to bring the Bofa and the Anguish. This should speed up the kills a lot, which means I can go to higher level revs. So yeah, uh, I, again, bringing a Bofa into the wilderness, I... Not a big fan of it, just in case something wild happens, but uh, considering I have the PK Skull Prevention on, in theory, there's no way for me to lose this. So, especially because it will be my plus one if somehow I do manage to get Skulled and I have Protect Item on. So, I'm just going to do it and hopefully we can kill something a bit stronger. I didn't talk about it before because it's really hard to calculate, but there are so many different items here that count as Revenant's uniques. You have the three Rev weapons, you have the Amulet of Avarice, you have all the totems, you have the Ancient Crystal, and they're all different drop rates depending on what you're killing. They're different depending on if you're Scald or not, which obviously right now I'm not, but uh, it's really hard to say like what the actual chances of me finishing the task on any of these kills because I really have no idea. So my plan is just to not think about it and focus on just all the great drops I've been getting. I mean, it's just really good for money, Alex, some supplies, like wilderness supplies that I can use on other revs tasks or wildy boss tasks or something like that. So yeah, I really have no idea what the drop rate is here. I don't know what I'm actually going to show you guys, but these bracelets are actually really nice. Uh, you can break them down for ether if you need more. I personally don't because I don't have a rev weapon, but if I ever do get one, that'll be nice. And if not, they actually alk for a lot. I think they're like they alk for 43k. So that alone is like pretty good. I'm going to stop showing you because they're more common than I thought they were, but uh, they are very nice. Hey, that's a thing. Let's go. I don't know why, I just really wasn't expecting to get it so early. I've only done 276 rev kills. I don't know, I mean, I've never really killed revs before. I don't know if that's a lot or not very much. Uh, I'll put the loot of stuff on screen here. Now, this is the worst thing that I could have gotten. Hey, congrats. Uh, this is the worst thing that I could have gotten because it's the 500k emblem and literally everything else would have been cooler, but we'll take it. First rev unique. I was expecting for there to be a lot more PKers and bots, but realistically, I did all of that in the 2200 total world, so I guess not too many bots have 2200 total. And the PKers that I saw, I was expecting to see less PKers because I was in the 2200 world, but the ones that I did see, I was expecting to be pretty good. I literally saw like four or five different people. I showed you the Fang guy. I don't know if I'm going to include any of the other people, but they were all just like literal raggers. They didn't, they didn't switch. They didn't TB me. If they attacked me, I just teleported away. I, I don't know what they were doing. I don't know what they were thinking. I don't know how they got into the world, but uh, it wasn't too bad, honestly. No, no deaths to PK. I mean, no deaths at all. So, I, I, you know, it went pretty well, all things considered. Anyways, I've got a couple clues I forgot to do. Uh, the hard clue was from a Krill bodyguard, and the medium was from an Eclectic that I just randomly caught. So I'm going to do these, then we'll go roll a new task. I don't know if I'm going to have time to do it in this video, but uh, if it's quick, maybe we can. Okay, back on the spreadsheet. First Rev's task completed. I believe there are two or three more. I don't remember, but uh, now that I kind of know more what I'm doing, I'm not as scared of those tasks anymore. So that's good. Uh, but yeah, let's see what we're doing. Yes. Yes, thank you, Spreadsheet. Get one unique from the Desert Treasure 2 bosses. Let's go. 
This is actually like my dream task right now. We are essentially guaranteed an upgrade. Now the mask would be kind of a sad upgrade because you don't really take the mask as many places, but the Virtus Rope Top, Virtus Rope Bottoms, or the Alter Vestige are all amazing upgrades. I'm so happy with this. It might take a while, and we did just kill a lot of our Dorvis, but uh, being able to end the task with an upgrade always feels good. But we are going to save that for the next video. For now, that's going to have to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave it a like, as that's the best way to help my videos with the YouTube algorithm. While you're down there, maybe check if you're subscribed so you don't miss out on the next one. And other than that, I'll see you in the next video. And I want to give a big thank you to all of my channel members, but a special thank you to my Tier 3 Big Spoon channel members, Alchemist BTW, Jack Staumer, Zach Martin, Luxitaire, Tony Adkins, Dolph, Fading Shadow, and Mondeep Bassi. And if you want to see your name here in the credits for the rest of the season, consider becoming a channel member. The lowest tier is only $2 a month, and it really helps me out. Thank you.